many laser measurement applications, the beam size can be controlled. In such cases, how large should you make your beam? How much of the sensor's aperture should the beam ideally fill? We're going to need to balance two conflicting needs. On the one hand, you want a large beam. Making the beam larger makes the power density smaller, and that keeps you farther away from the sensor's damage threshold. Also, it minimizes the effect of any small local non-uniformities across the absorber surface. On the other hand, you want a smaller beam in order to avoid a different problem, which is this. Consider a Gaussian profile. Note that the beam edges are not marked by a clean border. Beyond the 1 over E squared beam diameter, there's still quite a bit of power in the more or less invisible tails. Because of this, if, for example, your aperture is just exactly the 1 over E squared beam diameter, you're actually cutting off some 14% of the power in your beam, a large measurement error and one that you likely won't be aware of. On the other hand, if your aperture is 1.5 times the 1 over E squared beam diameter, then you'll still be chopping off part of the beam, but this time it's only 1.2%. We call this effect vignetting. The best practice approach is to find a healthy balance between not too small and not too large. When we calibrate sensors here in the Ophir factory, we adjust the beam size so that it fills about one-third of the sensor's aperture, as long as that still leaves us safely below the damage threshold. Our recommendation, to measure with the stated accuracy of a given sensor, the beam diameter should not exceed two-thirds of the sensor aperture's diameter. For more information, contact Ophir directly or through your local Ophir representative. <laughs>